In this NetEdit tutorial, I will show you how to import devices and how to find device details. You can import devices one by one, or you can import devices using a list of devices. And then you will also see what happens when you try to import a device, and for some reason the importation process fails. I'll show you how um, that is shown in NetEdit and where to find additional information. Once the importation of the devices is done, you will see that NetEdit also collected a lot of information about the devices, about each one of the devices. And I'll show you all of that, but let me first tell you one thing. During the importation of the devices, NetEdit will use the REST API to collect information from the device. But that same process will also be run every five minutes after the importation is completed. The goal is that NetEdit will be documenting every change that you make on the devices using NetEdit. But by scanning the devices for changes every five minutes, it will discover those changes, those configuration changes, hardware changes, software image changes that you have made on the device even outside NetEdit. Let's say that you added a module to an 8400. That new module will be discovered by one of these five-minute scans. So every five minutes, the device will be um, providing information to NetEdit. NetEdit is the one that initiates that conversation and that it will document the new module uh, in the hardware list for that particular device. Also, if you make configurations via uh, CLI or the REST API, etc., NetEdit within five minutes will discover that and document it and show you even the differences between that config and the previous one. So all of that is are different things that we will see during this uh, tutorial. So let's get started. Let's go to the devices menu, which is, or the devices context, which is the second option in the left hand menu. So you can see we have no devices in NetEdit at this point. So what I will do is I will go to the top right of this context to the action menu and uh, open that menu and select add devices. In this pop-up option here, you have the add multiple devices button here at the bottom. And so you can see that you can add devices one by one, or you can add them by entering multiple devices at once. I'm going to import multiple devices at once because it's easier and faster. So it tells me to um, specify devices to add by uploading a CSV file. So let's see about that. Let me go to my editor. This is the list of my devices. I have five here and I've reserved one um, 10.6.9.22 to import it individually. So let me show you both options. Um, first, this one. So I'm going to browse to my desktop. And on the desktop, I have this particular file. Let me see the name of the file. It was CXVMs. OK. That is my file. One important thing is that, as you saw in the file here, the only thing I have in each line is the IP address of the device. I don't have the username and password here. So today, for to import the devices, you just have to enter the username and password here. But this has an important implication. All the devices that you have listed in that file have to have the same password and the same username. So let's say add. And look at the right, you have this blue pop-up here giving you some information. You will find that many times when you execute some actions. And then on the left hand here in this context, you see 
um, a message telling you what is happening. So it says that five in progress, zero successful, zero fail, zero duplicates, etc. And it says that the import results are five successful. So we have the five new devices here. Let me take you back to something that we showed you during the, the first, the initial tour. If you go to the left hand menu to the diagnostics page, if one of those uh, importations failed, you will see that here. So let's try that. Let's put an IP address that does not exist and let's try to import that device. So I'll go back to devices and in this instance, I will do, uh, I'll force this to fail. So I'm going to say 10.6.8.55 and I'm going to say admin, admin. If it cannot log in, it will also give you an error. So the, the username and password, so it's not enough that you can ping the device. You also need to be able to log in and you need to be able to log in using the REST API. That is critical at this point. And I will explain some of that when we get back to the devices list. So I'm gonna say add and again, look at the left hand uh, here at the bottom left, it says one in progress, zero successful, zero fail. And we should expect this to fail. So this part where it says zero fail will change once the, the retry is finished. It takes a few seconds. There you are. So you see, it says one failed, but also it has a, a, a link there. A hyperlink so if I click there look what happened we went back to the diagnostics page and we have this message here telling us that 10.6.8.15 is unreachable and etc so the operating system is unknown because if it's unreachable it cannot log in etc so that is as I said a couple of times already the diagnostics page is where you find um, the the messages on things that just failed. So this will not stay here for long, but when you something failed, come directly here to find the information. So we still need to do the importation of a single device. That should be very easy. And as you can see, I don't have the AG1A device here, which is 10.6.9.22. I'm going to say action, add devices, and I'm going to say 10.6.9.22. Admin, admin. And as you can see, it's always the same doesn't matter if it's one device or many, the, the essence of the process is the same. And there you are. We have the first device here was not there before. As you can see, here there's a lot more information than just what you entered. So you can think that there's something else going on in the importation process than just finding the device. As with many management systems, you need to log in into the device. Your, your platform logs in into your device. In this case, it used the REST API and did what we internally call a device scan. I'm not saying that it scanned the devices on the network. It logged into the device and scanned the device itself or the, the configuration of the device itself and the state of the device to find out certain information. So the, and that is the information that you find here. For example, the basic MAC address, the name, the name of the device that you find here is the host name that you gave the device when you configured the basics uh, and enabled the the REST API and assign an IP address to the device. So for all of this to work, as you can see, and if you remember, 
AOS CX devices, 8320s, 8325s, and 8400s, by default, come from the factory with all the ports down and no configuration at all. So for NetEdit to be able to import the devices, you need to do some pre-work on the device itself. And you have several options. The first option is to connect to the console of the device and configure the basics. And the basics are a host name, not mandatory, but it's good so you can distinguish the devices in NetEdit. To give the user admin a password, because without that you cannot enable HTTPS, and you will need to enable HTTPS in order to enable the REST API. Remember, the REST API runs on top of HTTPS. Then you also have to enable the SSH server, and the SSH server is not necessary for this part, but you will need it later. So you can import the device without the SSH uh, server configured, but it is convenient to do it at the beginning um, because NetEdit will use it for one particular operation that we'll mention at the right time. So that is one way. You get to the console and you can do that. But remember, there is a mobile app called Aruba CX Mobile. And that mobile app will allow you to connect to the device. For example, today the 8325 and very soon the 8320 and the 8400 management modules will come from the factory with a USB to Bluetooth um, interface. So what we call usually a dongle. So that particular um, device, you plug it into the USB port on the management module or on the device itself, depending if it's a modular or a fixed device. And once you turn the device on, you wait a little bit. And then with the app, you can use your phone or a tablet and connect to your device. Uh, and we have apps both for iOS and Android. And you can connect to the device via the Bluetooth connection. And also, at the same time, the app can connect to NetEdit. So when you start configuring everything, you will see that um, you have an, a wizard in the app that will allow you to uh, put the basic um, parameters that you need on the device. You just configure the app and then uh, the app will send the information via Bluetooth to the device. The device will configure and once the device is configured, the app will call NetEdit and import the device for you. So there's um, a very nice simple and user-friendly way of doing all of this. So you don't have to touch the CLI at all if you don't want to. You can use your app and then get into NetEdit and do the rest of the um, monitoring and configuration through NetEdit. If um, there are some things that you cannot do via NetEdit, most of them you can do from the device's web UI itself. Uh, for example, if you can manage, if you want to manage configuration checkpoints, etc., you can do that from your web user interface. And also there, you can use your network analytics engine. So that trio of the the app, NetEdit, and the web user interface will give you access to most of the, the operations in the device, including monitoring um, and diagnostics. So it is, uh, you have a set of tools that will allow you to manage your device even without using the, um, the command or the console. Uh, you will still be using the CLI language when you create the configurations in NetEdit. And that is actually one of the uh, advantages that we see in NetEdit because the learning curve uh, for the CLI is very short 
you don't need to spend too much time learning the CLI because it's something that if you are a network admin, you already know. So having said all of this, let's get back to our devices list here. You have um, four 8320s. So I have two pairs of 8320s and then I have a pair of 8400s. All of these devices have already some level of configuration in them, but you can take a look at the firmware. We have different firmware levels on each one of them. The AG1 have 10.2.30, uh, 10.2.50 is on the AG2A, and the 8400 are at 10.2.0040. So let me show you a little bit of what other information we have on each device. This is a very important part of the, the device management. So let me take you to one of the 8400s, which is, has more information than the others because it's a, it is a chassis and has modules, etc. So from the hardware point of view, there should be more information on the 8400 than on the others. So let's visit one of my 8400s. So I will get back to my uh, device list and with that, we finish this particular device importation tutorial. Thank you.